Welcome to everybody that's joining. It's uh, Monday, February 6th. We're going to talk about a couple of different things, but some big news last week on interest rates uh, starting to, to come down. They've actually been coming down. Uh, but uh, but we'll talk about that, and then we're going to talk about inventory as well. If you saw the uh, message that was put out uh, this morning, uh, two bit two biggest issues: interest rates and inventory. Right now, we need more inventory, uh, so we're going to talk about those. Like I always say, uh, let us know where you are um, are watching from. I love to see everybody in here uh, that is watching, and uh, people from all over the country join the deep dive and. Uh, it's so so good to uh, to to see folks um, out there. You know, the the last week uh, we've been out and uh, was in Vegas uh, this past week. We'll be in Austin, Texas, um, on Friday of this week. If I can get my live going here, I'll follow along with everybody joining. Here we go. All right, but uh, but so so good to be uh, with uh, folks that are uh, that are out there and have joined for different events. Uh, good to see people um, out and about. So if we, if I swipe here, I should be able to see your comments. Trying to get those coming up. Uh, I can't get them. So um, anyways, let us know where you're joining from. Uh, I can't see those right now, but I know folks from all over the country are joining. Uh, always do on the deep dive. We'll talk about the two most important things, interest rates and inventory. Things that uh, I, I think matter right now is we're starting to see this turn in the market. And I want to give you the slides as always on the deep dive. If you're a KCM member, you can log in, you can grab these slides. And I'm going to say over the next 90 days, as we go through February, March, and April, heading into the spring market, being able to articulate what's happening is going to be the difference maker as we go through the next few months. I think we're going to see a spring market that's going to be very, very different than the last few months that we've seen. And we're already hearing uh, that talk out in uh, the world. You know, maybe it's an article from uh, uh, somewhere saying, hey, the thaw is happening in real estate, but people are starting to notice that. We're going to talk about that today. So I'll share my slides and, uh, and we'll get going here. What I wanted to start off with are just a couple of slides, just giving you a perspective on interest rates right now. And, and, and here would be my message. Mortgage rates are trending downward. You know, if you look at really about the first half of uh, November when rates peaked in this sort of downward trend that we're in, we wrapped up last Thursday, Freddie Mac, the average 30-year fix, 6.09%. Uh, now we're in a market where maybe up a little bit uh, a week, maybe down a little bit a week, but the trend, no doubt, is downward, okay? You know, there's that old saying, when rates go up, they take the elevator, and when they come down, they take the stairs, and I think this is true, but as we go throughout the next several months, we should expect better, uh, you know, information on uh, inflation. We should expect more uh, more positive news on that, less uncertainty. Now, there's the question of recession, and, you know, we've we've discussed that, but no doubt, um, we're seeing this downward trend in, in rates. Now, here's the interesting thing. When rates peaked just over 7% and where we ended up last week, in the last 90 days, we've come down a full point in the average 30-year fixed. Now, what I would do with that is I would go out and I would say, okay, what is the average loan amount in the area that I'm in? And what does that equate to in dollars? Because those dollars have come off a mortgage payment. You know, I saw this quote uh, from Allie Wolf from Zonda. She said this, I wonder... If some consumers have worked through the five stages of grief of higher mortgage rates, and I think I think they have, I think they've worked through it. You know, the issue that we had last year and the rapid rise in mortgage rates and the rapid rise in home prices that we dealt with in this shock, you know, as they started to shoot up, was not the actual rate itself. It was the quick rise to that rate that shocked the market. You know, you go back to the middle of last year when the Federal Reserve said we were going to reset the housing market, and they've done just that. But I think we're getting into a time where consumers are working through that and they understand that. Now, you know, if we go back to this slide right here, we believe we're heading into the, the hiding fives, you know, as we go throughout the year here. When we go into the fives, it's going to be a different perspective uh, from the consumer and we'll see that demand come up, certainly pent up demand over the last year. Now, I'm not saying we're going to see the frenzy of, um, of the COVID market or anything like that, but maybe some multiple offer scenarios. Certainly, uh, situations where uh, folks are dealing with, uh, you know, multiple offers where they haven't over the last six months, and I think consumers have worked through that. And in Ali Wolf's 
uh, sort of analogy there, the five stages of grief for mortgage rates. So I, I want to go to a slide now, one, one last slide on interest rates, because I think it articulates this market. If you're a team leader, if you're somebody with folks, you know, uh, that you're leading, I would have this printed out and I would really, really make sure people understand this going into the spring. It's this right here. This is sort of a, a graphic of the 2023 market and what you know, demand we can sort of expect based on rates. You know, if you go up seven to seven and a half weak buyer demand, we certainly saw that uh, last year. Uh, six and a half to seven is going to be limited. Okay, we're now in a stretch right now where we're in good buyer demand. We've certainly seen that over the last several months here, or the last several weeks here in January. And where are we heading into strong buyer demand when we get into that range five and a half to six? And we even dipped into that. Uh, at the end of last week and some uncertainty, the 10-year treasury kind of peaking up and, and, and coming back out of that here at the beginning of the week. But if you graph rates for the month of January and you look at them, where have we been? Right here in good buyer demand. And that would be my message is, is you know, going into the spring market, we should see good to strong buyer demand for this market. And, you know, I, I've talked extensively on the deep dive and other places about the turn that we're making in real estate. And, you know, by my estimation, we're a little over halfway through that turn. It's now time for leaders to, to pick their line, if you remember that, and really, really get their team together, get their plan together for how they're going to address this market come spring. But the bottom line is, as we head towards the spring, is that we need more listings. We need more listings in just about every market in this country. Now, there's some markets maybe that say we're a slide and that, that could be true, but by and large, um, we need more listings. There's not enough inventory for those that want to go out and buy a home right now. And I want to I want to break down for you what you know, many said would happen. Um, we had a different perspective. And, and I'll remind you, we said, hey, we don't see prices crashing in this market. And you're starting to see a turn in what experts are saying right now. But if you kind of break down this idea of listings, new listings are now below previous year's listings. And this is, is uh, the red bar there is uh, listings last year up through about the middle of the year. And what experts basically said when they made uh, you know their case for prices are going to fall is that this is what's going to happen. If, if inventory is right here, it's going to keep climbing. It's going to outpace demand and prices are going to fall. Okay, that's essentially what their case was back towards the middle of the year, maybe even going into the fall sometimes. But, but here's what actually happened as we went throughout the year. Inventory coming to market, new listings plummeted below where they've been in the last several years. You know, many people took their home off the market and said, gosh, it's not selling. We're just going to go ahead and take it off. And in December, we wrapped up the year 21% down in new listings coming to market year over year. Now, we've talked about this. Listings have been climbing. And I'm going to show you a graphic in just a minute to put that into perspective. But we're not bringing as many new listings to market. The reason listings have been climbing is things are sitting on the market. You know, use a quote here from Mike Simonson from Altos. He said, I'm looking at the latest housing data and I see a surprising demand indicator, including home price resiliency and supply staying restricted. Who would have guessed that? You know, if you look at the reason prices have maintained, it's all about inventory. There's not th this massive amount of inventory on the market that would, would dictate prices falling. So going back to this slide right here, when you want to explain the market to somebody or even somebody that says, hey, gosh, I feel like things are heading down. This is a great graphic to use with them and say, hey, would you mind if I shared something with you? Would you mind if I shared the reality of new homes coming to market right now? You know, if we think about uh, about inventory and I gave you the perspective that we need more in the market, it has been growing. This is how we wrapped up each year going all the way back to 2016. Now, I always say 2016, 2017, 2018, the last normal years in real estate before we entered the COVID years. And yes, we're ahead of where we were in 2020 and 2021, but massively behind where we were in 2019, 2018, 2017, and 2016 relative to the number of homes for sale, although it has increased, okay? And so because of this, our job now is to go out and uh, and find those listings, bring those listings to market. We've talked about expireds. 
we, we've talked about talking to people about the uh, uh, you know historical amount of equity they've had in their homes. Talking to people about, uh, you know, you bought something in the last couple of years. How is that working out? You know, just starting that conversation with people about what's happening in real estate. Now, here's something that's interesting uh, that came out. I want to give you a couple of more slides before I wrap here and ask Jess if there are questions. Um, you're starting to see big banks revise their forecast. You know, some came out and said, we're going to see a massive decline. I'll give you one example right here from Goldman Sachs, they came out on January 10th and said, we believe the real estate market nationally is gonna lose about 6% this year. Well, what they come out on the 24th of January and say, well, we wanna make a different decision here. We think about 2.6%, so massive revisions. Expect more of those to come from those that have called for extreme decrease uh, across the country in residential real estate. Why is that? Because, we don't have the inventory out there. You know, supply and demand is always going to dictate pricing. Also, we've got an update to, to this slide. If you follow the deep dive, if you're a KCM member, you know, we talked about have home values in the decrease hit bottom, uh, you know, sometime around the, the fall, right around August, the, the, um, the amount of depreciation peaked. Now, these numbers are cumulative, but you've seen less depreciation by and large as we've gone throughout the months uh, since the fall. Now, we're going to continue to watch this, but here's the bottom line. Prices are not in a free fall, again, going back to the lack of inventory across the country. Now, our job is to get out there and have conversations, to educate people, to make a video, to use real talk if you're not using that to go in and use the monthly market report. We do that on the 10th of every month. I'll remind you that here at the end, but here's the reason why. There was a, there was a survey done by NerdWallet that, that said 67% of Americans say a housing market crash is imminent in the next three years. So we talk all the time about we have to control the narrative because that message is out there. There are people that believe this market is about ready to crash and we have to get out there and get the truth out there. And we have the tools and the resources to be able to do that. If you're a KCM member, use these slides to get them out there in the hands of people. Use them in a listing presentation. Share them with someone that you're talking to about what's happening in this market. You know, I mentioned before, and Jess, I'll bring you up in just a second, um, about the monthly market report. It comes out on the 10th of every month. You know, it's something that, um, you know, KCM members have access to where they can download all the slides in the monthly market report. We give you a transcription of it, and then you can then go out and make your own video. You can use it to teach your team with. You can use it to teach uh, maybe somebody else with if you're doing something like that, or just education for yourself. If you have somebody new on your team, I would have them listen to the monthly market report every month, and they will understand what's going on in real estate across the country. So, Jess, I'm going to pause for a second and see if we have any questions. Uh, I can't see comments right now. Hi, Dave. The only hey. question that I've seen come through is from Jeff, who asked if we had any ideas on how to get more listings. I'll give you three ideas. That's from Jeff, you said? Yes. Jeff, you can go back and look at uh, Deep Dive. I did a week before or two weeks ago, I can't remember, on expired listings. I think there is a, a, an opportunity in expired. We have inventory in most markets that's climbed and you have demand that's fallen. That leads exactly to expired listings. Uh, that's one I would look at. Two, I would begin talking to people about the amount of equity they have in their home. There's more equity in homes today than there's there's been in, in just about ever. Uh, and so what are the plans that people have with that equity? Have they thought about doing something that leads maybe to a conversation for maybe a move up buyer, a downsized buyer, whatever the case may be. Um, and third, uh, there, there are certainly a lot of uh, articles that say something to the extent that maybe some people uh, have buyer's remorse of buying during the pandemic. Now, I don't believe that's by and large true, but I believe it's a place to start a conversation from to say, hey, you bought a house in the last couple of years. How do you feel about that? And oh, by the way, there was an article out there. Do you feel that way? I think most people that buy a home at some point, they say, I would have done something different. We would have had the closet here. Or we would have you know, configured the kitchen this way. They have some sort of you know, uh, a type of decision they would have made differently. But I think those are three areas we can have conversations with. Now, if you go back to, Jeff, kind of what I've talked about and the, the turn that we're in, we're halfway through it. I think there are a lot of people that are kind of sitting, waiting to see what's going to happen. The educated agent, the confident agent is having conversations right now relative to what's going on and educating those they're working with. Great question, though. 
Awesome. Thank you, Dave. And I did just see one more question come through, um, I think in reference to your last slide from Sharon, who asked, what was the exact question of why 67% of people think this market is going to crash? You'd have to go back to the Nerd Wallet study. If you um, know anything about the KCM slides in the notes section is a link to the report. You can go in there to that uh, report, Sharon, and find that out. But I, I don't know the answer to that. Awesome. And one more that just came through, yep. Marty asked, sellers are afraid to become buyers. How do yeah. you rec recommend overcoming this objection? Sure. I think that's one of the, there, there are two things that are holding um, sellers back right now. One are, are the, the massive number of people that have an interest rate that's favorable right now, two and three quarters to three. And they're like, we're going to stay put. The other fear is the fear of not being able to find something. Okay. So I think there are a couple of things that, that folks can do. One is, is you can use a home equity line if you've got that equity to go out and buy something and then you, you know make the move right there. But, but I think that issue right there, I can't remember who asked the question, is the issue. And, and no doubt our ability to have an eloquent conversation and probably people on the call uh, that, that are qualified to that, not even ask in the, in the comments here, how are you dealing with that question? But I think one, one way to navigate that is through a home equity line, but no doubt we need more inventory uh, out in the market so folks feel like they can go out and find something. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. And then just one reminder, we got a question um, from David who said, as a member of KCM, we can use the slides in a video, correct? And I just want to say, absolutely. Uh, the information and content we give you is yours to take and repurpose or create um, however you see fit. So members can access their slides and resources in the deep dive archive of their member area. Yep. So we'll wrap on that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, you know, always love starting our week off this way with everybody on the deep dive. Um, these are the two biggest issues. I'd be talking about uh, the, uh, the the downward trend in, in interest rates and the need for more inventory. Uh, so there is opportunity there. So enjoy this week. We'll see you back uh, again next week. Take care.